Hello there, students. In the last video, we looked at applying the Biot-Savart equation to a circular current loop by finding the B field at the very center of the loop. In this video, we'll use the same circular current loop, but we're going to instead calculate the B field at any point on this circular current loop's central axis along this dotted line. To do this, we'll look at an arbitrary point on the central axis. This point makes a right triangle with the radius of the loop and the distance to the loop vector r, like this. We will start with a differential form of the Biot-Savart equation. Now, let's go ahead and label our diagram with all of these variables. If we choose a current going counterclockwise from our perspective, that makes vector dl look like this. Next, we should get an expression for just the magnitude of the differential Biot-Savart equation. Taking the magnitude for the cross product, we will get the magnitude of vector dl times the magnitude of vector r times the sine of the angle between them. Here, to avoid the confusion that using theta for the angle would incur, we will use phi. Let's take a look from the top down at our current loop to see where this phi is and what it looks like. We know that we will eventually need to integrate around the entire loop to get the full B field. When we do this, this angle phi will always be 90 degrees. This means the sine of the angle phi will always be equal to 1. Now, let's rotate the current loop so that we are seeing it edge on, and only keep track of the two points at the very top and bottom of the loop. The top portion of our loop has a vector dl coming out of the page, which we denote with this circle with a dot inside. And on the bottom point, we have a vector dl pointing into the page, so we denote that with this symbol. If we take this central axis to be along the z-axis, and up to be the y-axis, then the distance from the center of the loop to this point along the axis is a distance z. And the angle made by the z-axis and vector r we label with theta. Following the cross product between vector dl and vector r, or using a right-hand rule, we can see that the infinitesimal b-field vector db, at our point of interest, will be pointing in this direction. If we draw a vertical line perpendicular to the z-axis at our point of interest, then we can see that this angle is also the same theta that we've previously labeled. We can also use the fact that this triangle in green is a right triangle to get a relationship between vector r, the radius capital R, and the distance z. With this, we can replace the r squared in our Biot-Savart equation. We're doing this because we're more interested in having the variable z in our final equation rather than little r. If we do this same labeling process for the bottom current, the opposite half of the loop, we'll notice that we end up with two vector db. This means their vector components in the y direction will cancel each other, while their z components will add to each other. In other words, the only non-zero component of the b field when we add all of these pieces together will be the z component, so that is all we need to focus on. Always look for symmetries like this to simplify your problems. For db, let's take a closer look at the geometry we have to work with. Here, we can see that this angle is also the same theta that we've been working with all along. If we take the sine of angle theta, we get the z component of db, divided by the magnitude of the entire db vector. We can rearrange these scalars to isolate the z component dbz. We can then take a look back at our original diagram's triangle, the green triangle, and find another equivalent way to write this sine of theta as the radius of the circle capital R divided by the magnitude of vector r. From our Pythagorean theorem earlier, we can substitute for the magnitude of vector r. Putting this all together, we get an equation for the z component of vector db. Now, we can substitute in the magnitude of the differential Biot-Savart equation we found earlier into this equation for dbz. Now, to get the full z component of the b field, which is the only non-zero component, we need to integrate this infinitesimal piece dbz. The circle on the integral symbol is indicating that we are traversing the entire path of a closed loop, in this case, the wire loop itself. This integral is really simple. 
all the integration is telling us to do is start at one point of the circular current loop, walk along the loop until we get back to where we started, and report how long that was. This is just a fancy way of saying the circumference of the circular current loop. After we simplify the answer, we get this result. This is the z component of the b field produced by this circular current loop for any point along the central or z axis. In the previous video, we calculated the b field at the center of the loop, which would correspond to z equals 0 for us in this problem. If we set z equals 0 in our new equation, we should expect to recover the exact equation from the other video. Let's give it a try. In the denominator with z equals 0, we just have capital R squared to the 3 halves power, which gives us capital R cubed. Two powers of this will be cancelled by the capital R squared in the numerator, leaving us with this equation, which is exactly what we expected. We can also think about going in the other direction, taking z really far away from the center of the loop. For this thought experiment, we should introduce the equation for what is called a magnetic dipole moment, which is just denoted with the Greek letter mu, which should not be confused with mu naught, the permeability of free space. Mu is equal to the current times the cross-sectional area of the loop, in this case, the area of a circle. Now, if z is much larger than the radius of the loop, capital R, then the denominator is mainly influenced by the z variable and we can say that the r squared term has zero weight in the denominator. This means that we can write the denominator instead as just z cubed. This gives us this form for bz. Rearranging the dipole moment equation, we can get this expression. Now we can substitute in this dipole moment term. In some cases, you'll see it in this form without simplifying, just so that its form will be similar to its electric dipole moment counterpart. In the next video, we'll take a look at applying the Biosafar equation to a different type of wire geometry entirely. Until then, thanks for watching and learning about physics. If you have any questions or want to see a specific topic, leave a comment below or head over to my Facebook page in the video description.